Um, 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 hi, I'm so sorry you caught me right in the middle of my Burger King supper. Oh, so good. I don't know about you, but I love Burger King. When I was a kid, I used to sing their songs, you know, um, have it your way a Burger King, have it your way, have it your way. And, um, you know, special orders don't upset us. All we, yeah. Oh, I am so sorry. I just really love food. And ma'am, it makes me happy. Does it make you happy? Makes me happy. Oh, speaking of happy, there's a word happy behind me and the happy face behind me. Well, tonight we're talking about happy. Oh, I, I you know, forgive me my manners. Let me put my supper away. Oh, that was so good. And, um, oh, do I have any crumbs on my face? How about my teeth? Okay, good, 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 good. Well, hi, I'm Pastor Rebecca, and you've come to Duluth Gospel Tabernacle on Wednesday night. We are so excited that you're here, and we want you to know that I'm the children's pastor for DGT, which is uh, DGT Kids, are the, is the kids' ministry of Duluth Gospel Tabernacle, where we are safe, fun, and Jesus is in everything. So tonight we're going to start off, and I, I found something that I thought would be kind of fun. Instead of the big flags, although they are here, we're going to use the little flags for our um, for our pledges tonight. So I want to just encourage you that when we make a pledge to our flag, we do the American flag, the Christian flag, and then the Bible, that one, you have your Bible ready to hold it up, two, you stand up when we're pledging the, the flags, and if you have a hat or a hood on, take it off in respect. Okay, here we go. We'll do the American flag first. Um, I pledge allegiance. Oh, better put your hands over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. Good job. Okay, now... Let's do the Christian flag. And I was really excited that I could bring this because the Christian flag I've been bringing hasn't shown you exactly what it is. So here it is. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood uniting all true Christians in service and in love. Good job. Good, good job. Now let's do the Bible. Ready? I pledge allegiance to to the Bible. God, a lot of times we do this. God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Um, we have been having a great time on Wednesday nights. We learned the Lord's Prayer. And then the last couple weeks we've been working on the Ten Commandments. Do you remember those cool pictures that we could draw to remember the Ten Commandments? One, God, make God first place in your life. Um, two, thou shalt have no, thou shalt not bow to graven images. Don't bow to graven images. And we make the two look like a snake. Three, thou shalt not use the name of the Lord God, your name in vain. So don't use God's name as a swear word. And you put three fingers in like that. For two, you bow down. Four. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, and the Sabbath day is a day of rest. So you take the four, um, you take the four uh, fingers and you rest. Number five, five is where you take three fingers and two fingers, or you draw a picture of a mommy and a daddy, and the children need to respect the mommy and the daddy. Respect your parents, even if they don't live with you, you still respect them. Six. Let's see, is this right? Yep. Six, thou shalt not kill. Six, thou shalt not kill. Seven, this is, um, thou shalt not commit adultery or stay true to your mate. Number five, um, eight, thou shalt not steal. There's our money bags. Nine, I love nine. And eight, you go, thou shalt not steal. And nine, thou shalt not lie. Don't lie. 
Don't bear false witness. Don't lie. Lying is really detrimental to your relationships. It'll hurt your relationships. And 10, boy, I'm struggling with my paper here. I'm just going to move it out of the way. And 10, thou shalt not covet. So those things we talked about as rules that God wants us to live by that helps us to live a happy life. And we talked about the caution tape and how a lot of times kids want to get as close to the caution tape as they can without getting hurt. But God wants us to stay away from the edges so we don't get hurt, right? And rules actually make the game um, happier. Well, today I brought a very special burger. Do you, do you, you know that the theme today is about burgers because I was eating and you know I wouldn't eat just for any reason other than to tell you that God wants you to have happiness in your life and he wants you to live a life that makes you happy and full of him and that he want he has come John 10:10 10, 10 says I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly and so many times we think that rules and ways to live is to make us not happy and to to restrict us but actually Jesus says that he's come that we might have life and have it abundantly he wants our life to be the best life we can have can you say yes to that I can say yes to that so everybody can you just do a little happy dance he wants you to have a happy life happy dance now I have learned how to floss now of course flossing like this is not the the best way because it does I can't you can't see the whole thing but that's what God wants you to do he wants happy life for you and so our theme verse this year has been Psalm 144 15 happy or blessed see here's the word blessed and here's the word happy and believe it or not they're kind of the same thing God wants us to live a blessed life which is a happy life so if I bless you with a lot of gifts, that makes you happy, right? If I have favored you, blessed you, you will have you will be happy. And so God has called us to live a blessed life, which will lead to our happiness. So we remember we did the Lord's Prayer, and that was in Matthew 5. And remember that, that we talked about that being the Sermon on the Mount, and God was just Jesus was teaching us how to live as followers of God. Well, one of the things that we find in John is when he's teaching, he says, he says, I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that you might have full measure of joy. I have given them your word and the word has hated them. My prayer is that you take them out of the, is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. So that Jesus has said, I want you to be in the world, but I don't want you to be a part of it. Um, today I have an experiment, one I'm sure you've done before. You're going to need a jar. You're going to need something to cover it. You're going to need water and oil and some food coloring if you want. So first I am going to put water in here. And I'm going to put a little more. I'm just going to use all my water up. And then I'm going to put some food coloring in. And what this reminds me of is this reminds me of the world. And when I say the world, I mean the people that don't follow Jesus and the things of the world that can sometimes be troublesome in our life. Like, you know, just the way the world is. And so then this reminds me of you and me. And we have, when we have Jesus in our heart, and so I'm putting it in here. And we are going to live in the world, aren't we? When we become Christians, when we ask Jesus in our, to our heart, he doesn't take us away from the world, but he leaves us in the world. And do you see? Do you see how the how I am separated from the world? Well, when Jesus comes into your heart, he wants to take the things that are of the world, like lying, cheating, stealing, you know, bickering, painful things, not healthy things, and he wants to separate them from you. And if we live a life that is blessed, that brings happiness, what will happen is we will, so 
you see how separated this is? I shook this one up so that it was all shaken up and then it separated again. And this is like the beginning of the separation. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake it up and by the end of our little time together, you will see that it's separating again. And it, it's a reminder, I would love you to make one of these. And you know, every day maybe shake it up, shake it up good. And see now look how blended it looks. Look at how blended it looks. The Bible says you are in the world, but not of it. We have to be in the world. We have to live in this world. We're living with COVID. We're living with isolation. We're living with all these things. But God still wants us to have a blessed life. He still wants us to be happy. He still wants us to have reason to dance, reason to celebrate. I have made a goal for this year of my life. I am going to celebrate something every day. And do you know what today's celebration is? I bet you can't guess. Today is to celebrate fruit cocktail. Yes, sirree. So I am getting a can of fruit cocktail and we are gonna have a fruit cocktail party at my house tonight because I'm telling you, God has come that I might have life and have it abundantly. And sometimes that means celebrating the little things. So John tells us to be in the world and not of it. Look it. Can you see how it's already started to separate? Oh my word, it cannot, this oil cannot mix with this water, no matter how hard I try. And it looks like it's blended. It'll immediately separate. And God wants us to be like that. And he has given us a way to do it. So today we're going to read in Matthew. Remember last week we talked about rules and how if you're playing a game, you like to know the rules. And we sat, stood up and sat down. Tonight we're going to eat what's called the hamburger of happiness. Or, I thought I had a bee here, yep. Or we could say that you're going to plant a garden of beatitudes. But I really thought it would be fun to do the hamburger of happiness. But the little kids are going to learn about the Beatitudes, the be kind, be happy, be blessed, be like Jesus. So the Beatitudes are in Matthew 5. I think I've been saying 4. Matthew 5. And um, one day as Jesus saw the crowds gathering, so he was around a lot of crowds, he sat down and he began to teach them. And he said, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for them. For their kingdom, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then he said, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses though the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And God blesses the persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So I brought my beatitude, my happiness hamburger tonight. Do you see? So here's my hamburger all wrapped up. And here's my hamburger, even has a sesame seed bun. And it is my, it's the hamburger of happiness. Do you see that? It's the hamburger of happiness. And it's found in Matthew 5, 1 through 12, and it's called the B attitudes. So B attitudes is why a lot of people like to have bees around the B attitudes because it makes you think B your attitude. So tonight we're talking about the hamburger of happiness and we're probably only going to get halfway through, but every good hamburger has to have a good bun, right? Because if you don't have a good bun, you end up with all kinds of messiness. And um, in this first, in this first beatitude, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit. In my version, it says, blessed are those who are poor and realize their need for Jesus. So, my first, the bun on my hamburger, okay, it says, 
Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. And let's see, what do they get? So the happiness you get for recognizing your need for Jesus, that means I need Jesus, is you get the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that cool? So the bottom of your, your hamburger of happiness is that if you recognize you need Jesus, you will your happiness will be the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to put this down here, right here. So the kingdom of heaven and poor in spirit. Um, I I know you can't read it from afar, but that's that is our bottom. That's our first part of our hamburger. And so there's. There's a blessing. Happy are those who have this attitude. And what's the attitude? The attitude is I need Jesus. Okay? That's your attitude. That's what's going to hold your life together and keep your life so your hands aren't all messy is the need for Jesus. So blessed are those who need Jesus. And what are you going to get? You're going to get the kingdom of God. John 3.16 says, For um, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him. So believing in him is understanding that you need Jesus, and then you get the kingdom of heaven, and that's the happy part. <gasps> Isn't that exciting? Okay. The next piece, what do you put? You know, doing a hamburger is kind of important. Now, I don't like ketchup. On my hamburgers. I like ketchup. I don't like on my hamburgers. I don't like mustard. I don't like pickles. I like onions and mayonnaise. Who thought, huh? But a lot of people like cheese. And so now we're going to go to the second beatitude. Remember? It's your attitude. It's the happiness that you that you allow God to do. And it will make your life a sandwich. Sandwich that is blessed. And it will keep you from being you you will be in the world but not of it see just like that okay so what's the second one it's kind of an interesting one this is the cheese and the bible says blessed are those who mourn what does mourning mean mourning means being sad if your kitty cat passes away you're gonna you're gonna be sad and it's not just a sadness like, oh, I dropped my cupcake. It's a sadness that goes into your heart. That's called mourning, mourning, being really sad. When I was a very young lady, my brother passed away. And I cried really hard about it because it really made me sad. And I still miss him today. So the cheese part of the Bible is it says, blessed are they that mourn. Now, why should we mourn? Well, we mourn about our sins. We say, I'm sorry about my sins. I'm really sorry. And he says, because you will be comforted. So, blessed are they that mourn, for you will be comforted. So, one of the most important things about doing wrong is knowing it and being sad about it. If my children lie to me and they say, well, whatever, I'm sorry. It's hard for me to want to bless them. But if they say, man, I'm really sorry, Mom. I'm, re I'm really sorry. And you can see that they're almost mourning, being sad, crying about their sins. I comfort them and I forgive them. And I say, hey, so that is the next piece of our hamburger. So now we've got the bun, which is... Blessed are they, what? Blessed are they that, do you remember, are poor in spirit, for they're going to get the kingdom of heaven. That's their happiness. And now, blessed are they that mourn sadness over their sin, for they will be comforted. And we know what comfort means. Is it means that we're going to get everlasting life. So there's our sandwich so far. Now, I don't want to take too much of your time, so I'm going to just do one more layer of our hamburger, and next week we'll do some more. We'll get into the meat. So now my question is, do you know what this is on a hamburger? What could that be? Does anybody know? It's the tomato. Some people like it, some people don't. So when you're listening today, comment that if you like tomatoes or not, okay? 
So the next one it says is blessed are the meek. Now in my scripture it says blessed are those who are humble for they will, I'm not going to get to the next part, but it says for they will, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So the tomato is blessed are the meek or who are humble. That means they're not proud. They're not, they don't come in to a situation and expect everything. In today's world, kids are often called entitled. That means I, I deserve this. I demand this. And what Jesus says for you to have a happy, blessed life and not live like the world, you're going to have to have an attitude, a be attitude that is one of meekness or being humble. And that is not expecting letting other people bless you, letting other people honor you. And you know what your reward for that is? This is so exciting. So all of these beatitudes, the reason these are blessed, the reason you get blessed and become happy is because when you have these attitudes, there's a reward. There's something you get. And it says, so remember, meek is not being like, I deserve it all. I want it all, right? That's like, hey, whatever you need, you can have. And the Bible says that your reward for not acting like you own it all is you get it all. You will inherit the earth. That's amazing, isn't it? I'm going to put my tomato up on my, my sandwich. Look at that. So blessed are the poor in spirit. Do you remember what you get if you're in the poor in spirit? You get the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Why? Because you are comforted. God comforts you and says, I will take you away your sin and I will comfort you. And blessed are the meek, the ones who don't own it all, because I'm going to give it all to you. I'm going to give you the earth. So today, as we continue, I can't wait till next week's lesson. I don't know about you, but I literally cannot wait. This has been so exciting, the be attitudes, to learn the true attitude of being like Jesus. And just remember, he wants you to be in the world, but not of the world. He wants you to have a blessed life. John 10.10 10 says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. And so far, what part of the life is he wants you to have the kingdom of God. He wants you to be comforted. And he's going to give you the whole earth. Wow. This is super cool. I hope that you're enjoying this. Read it. It's Matthew 5, the first 12 verses. Read it and shoot a bear it. If you want to memorize it, that would be super cool. If you want to memorize it, that would be super cool. Okay, well, have a good day. I'm going to pray and be done. I try to keep these short bless you. Thank you for coming to DGT Kids. You are awesome. I love you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for these kids. I pray that you would bless them. Lord, you want them to have a happy life and a blessed life. And the Bible is very clear how you how we're going to do that. So help us tonight to be sorry for our sins. Help us to ask Jesus into our heart as our Savior. Help us, Lord, to not walk around like we are owning it all, but that we can be the salt and the light of the earth. We can be in the world and not of it, Lord, and we can be like you. Thank you that you want to give us a blessed and happy life. In Jesus' name, amen.